I'm going to try a little bit different format this week. I'll give a brief overview of what it is that I want to make and how we're going to do it. And then I'll have just action with a few captions to remind you of what's going on. What I have here is a quarter inch diameter shaft. And this is a shaft that I want to have a wheel ride on. So the wheel needs to have the negative profile of this shaft that we have here. So what I need to make this profile in the wheel is a cutter which looks like at least half of that wheel. And it needs to be very round because I want this wheel to ride really well on there. The wheel is going to be made out of Delrin, so it's fairly soft. We can get away with some things as far as the type of cutter that we're using. But I tried grinding the first cutter by hand, for example, and it came out pretty round. It came out okay, <laughs> but it wasn't that great, and it's not something that I could reproduce even if I did hit it well every once in a while. So the next thing that I tried was putting the piece in the rotary table. So you have the piece like this, the center of the rotary table is here. And as your cutter starts out here and works its way around the center, what you end up with is that round piece left after you've done that. Also, if you take this piece and flip it like this, you still end up after this operation with a 90 degree corner all along the space. So there's no relief and you need a, some sort of relief here in order for it to clear the material and cut it well. And to create that, I would have to do it by hand, which means I'm back to trying to grind a very tight tolerance line to that curve. It just didn't work that well. I tried this also. So what I settled on doing, I made a couple of these before, is taking advantage of the fact that I can turn very round things in the lathe. Lathes are handy for that. So what I do is I take a piece of 01 tool steel, which is hardenable. Whether or not it needs to be hardened is up for debate here. Probably not, but that's what I used. And I take that steel and I turn it so that it looks like this, okay? And this diameter here is the diameter of that, maybe plus a couple thousandths for a reason that'll come up later. And then once I have this and I've mostly parted it, I actually take this and I angle that in, okay? That's creating our relief. Our cutter, as you can see, is oriented this way right now. That creates our relief on the cutter. We've drilled a hole down the center, and then we finish parting this off. We're able to put this on a mandrel where it's hanging out here, and then we can harden it and then sharp, uh, sharpen it with a diamond wheel. The one that I tried to grind on the rotary table setup, I tried making a cutter like that, and so what I had was I had a piece where it has a nice long shank and then it comes down to a thin projection like this. And so instead I'm going to use that to hold my insert. I can take this and plunge this into the Delrin, which is spinning like so. And our chips come up and go wherever they go. So that's what we're going to do. I made these a little bit before, so I'm pretty sure that it'll work. And let's get to it.
So there we go. For a couple dollars and not much time, I have a cutter which is exactly what I wanted. Some of the previous attempts actually had very slightly better surface finishes, which I think was due to the fact that they were not as sharp and probably melted and kind of burnished that surface a little bit. One of them in particular was, was quite glossy. But in this case, I didn't even have to do that burr raising strategy because I felt it just after putting out of the mandrel and it was quite sharp. So I left it alone and it worked out great. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.